You're listening to Talking to Teens, where we speak with leading experts from a variety of disciplines about the art and science of parenting teenagers. I'm your host, Andy Earle. We're here today with Dina Alexander. She is the founder and president of Educate and Empower Kids, an organization determined to strengthening families by teaching digital citizenship. She also tries to teach media literacy, healthy sexual education, including education about the dangers of online porn. So we're really excited to talk to her today about how to talk to teenagers about sex and stuff they're seeing on the internet and just kind of what conversations parents should be having with teenagers about that stuff, how to approach those topics. She's written a couple books on that and uh, she's really an expert. So can't wait to get into all of that and more. I'm really excited. Can you just tell us a little bit about your journey and what was it that kind of led you here and prompted these these books and this website? So I am a mom of three kids and my background from college is in pre-marriage and family therapy. And my master's is in recreation therapy, which is like a group therapy degree where you use games and initiatives to get people to talk about their feelings versus just sitting in a group and asking random questions. Right. So this is about five years ago. I was just on Facebook. I was, you know, a stay home mom at that time. I still am, but now I work much more during the day when my kids are at school. But I was reading an article sure. about teen porn use, and it was so outrageous to me. I couldn't believe it. So I started doing some research, and it really shocked me, and it, it scared me for my, my kids, where I realized, okay, there's going to be nobody left for my daughter. She was in the eighth grade at the time, and I thought there will be nobody left that she will date that will not be highly influenced or perhaps even addicted to porn. Mm. And that kind of like lit a fire in me where I was like, okay, I got to talk to every parent I possibly can. And I, so I started talking to, you know, friends and family. And I first, I thought, cause I couldn't even get my friends to talk about sex, let alone pornography with their kids. And I thought, is this like a Christian problem? Like what is going <laughs> on? And then I realized, no, my atheist friends just as terrified just as terrified of talking to their kids about sex and porn. And I had grown up in a very open home, very okay with talking about these things, very positive, always talking about sex. So I didn't get it. Like I couldn't understand it, you know? So I started researching more and more. I kind of got a handle on it and I just reached out to various experts just tons and tons of research trying to figure this out and started putting together a board and an organization and then started writing those books. Our first set of books were the 30 days of sex talks. We have them for age three to seven, eight to 11 and 12 plus. Cause again, parents have so many, they're just not even sure what to say to what age group and what's okay. And what's not okay. And a lot of myths out there about I don't want to create too much curiosity. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do nobody. Right, nobody wants right. to screw it up. You don't want to say the wrong thing. And then like you went out there on a limb and did all this and actually made it worse. You know, It's hilarious because every quote unquote expert I talk to has a horror story about how they screwed something up with their kids. So I kind of yeah. try to let parents know that like, we're all going to screw up like this. There's no perfect way to do this. But you need to open your mouth and start talking. You need to create that home but of openness that your kids want to ask you questions, that they know they can ask you any question without you freaking out. And so that's where yeah. we started and have just continued on. And now we've written nine books and we have tons of resources on the website, et cetera, that are free and just always just trying to keep updated and helping parents however we can. That's so cool. And it's a great mission and it's really specific. You had said your kids were how old when you started that? My daughter was in the eighth grade. I had an eighth grader, a fifth grader, and a third grader, I believe. And now they are 18, 15, and 12. And so we kind of have been doing this as they've been growing up. And it's been, it's been awesome, you know? creating this organization, doing this work, doing the research has just made me a way better mom. 
you know, that I have the relationship I want with my kids. I don't come at things from a place of fear because I have spent the time mm. working and creating what I want so that I know when they launch out of my house, they're going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, they got it. And I think that's what strikes me about these books because I, I get this, you know, from parents. I had this mom who was like, you know, how do I get my son to stop going over to the girlfriend's house? Because I know the parents aren't supervising him well over there, you know. And I was like, well, ma'am, why do you think it is that you, your son is in situations right now that you can't trust him to be in? That, to me, suggests you haven't prepared him enough. He's right now finding himself in places that, you know, he's not prepared for or you don't trust him to be in. Like, So we got to start educating him fast, you know. Yeah. Or what can you create in your home that he wants to bring his girlfriend to your home yeah. versus what, what, why, what is he trying to, why is he trying to get out as often as possible, you know? And so, okay, one thing that strikes me it just right off the bat from this book is that it's 30 days of sex talks. And so I thought the sex talk was like a thing that you just kind of did once and got it out of the way. Heck no, no way. So that's no. kind of like how we were raised, right? Our parents patted themselves on the back. They gave you this one talk. There was perhaps, at least talking to a lot of parents all over the country, there was usually some special dose of shame added in that they thought they were doing <laughs> a good job. They wanted to let you know it was shameful if you did it at this time and not married and all this stuff. And We've learned better, you know, that one, like one, we're not going to wait for our kids to ask the questions because that's what I was taught when my mom, my kids were really little was, oh, wait till they ask you. And then, and we don't teach that anymore. Now that we're handing our kids phones and devices when they're three and four years old, and you got to be proactive. You have to yeah, start yeah. first because it's about helping your kids know that you're a source and that it's okay to talk to mom and dad about these things. So one, we believe in starting first and it's, and a lot of times people see the cover and they freak out and they're like, you expect me to do 30 days of sex talks. But again, <laughs> what we've done is we've just broken them up into these tiny discussions, you know, and most yeah. parents will flip through it and see that they've already done three or four of these, you know, whichever they are. And sure, then they go, yeah. oh, okay, I've done this. And then they see it because we want parents to open that book look at the lesson for maybe five minutes and then give it like that. This should not be a big deal. This should not be, we're not creating an event with ice cream and balloons when we have a sex talk that it's just really not a big deal that it's maybe something you do in the car as you're driving to dance class or soccer practice, or that you're just doing it over the dinner table, <clears throat> that it's just a few minutes here and there that it's a chat. It's not the talk. It's several mm. chats that you're going to have about sex because we want our kids to be able to recreate that event, right? So we don't want to create this event that they can't replicate, right? Oh, I'm only allowed to talk about sex at this event or In this circumstance. Or, yeah, or these parents, yeah, yeah, they, they'll right. send their kids to something I heard about as I've gone around is they'll send their kids on a purity weekend, right? With the pastor. Mm that the pastor teaches. So they've abdicated their responsibility as a parent and give it to the pastor to teach this, this lesson to their kids, which to me is, is crazy because to me, the home yeah. is the best place to talk about this stuff. Right. And wouldn't you want to know yeah. what your kid is being taught and have some say in the curriculum? Exactly. There, or why why wouldn't you want to be in, be in charge of that? You know, that again, yeah, like this is right. something that is positive. We want our kids, you know, to think of sex in a good, positive way. So I need to lead that discussion. I don't want it. I'm like, yeah, they're going to get sex ed in school, which is fine. But I also want them to know that I want them to have heard it from me first, you know? So yeah. again, we make it, we just try to break it into these small conversations that you can have and that your kids can just come back to you when they feel comfortable or when they want to ask another, add another layer onto the discussion. Uh, I love that habitual approach. And I think, you know, one of the big lessons to teach kids is just the power of 
everyday habits. It's like the lesson that you have to learn in childhood is just the things that you do consistently and repeatedly are so, so important in shaping the person that you become. And I I think you kind of make a good argument in this book about pornography, that that's kind of uh, really one of the dangers of pornography, especially for teenagers, is that it's so easy to kind of slip into that, like a habitual use of it. And I thought it was interesting in there that you mentioned getting parents to talk about pornography, but you couldn't even get her to talk about sex. So I want, that made me curious. So does, does that mean that sex is like the, the gateway and that you talk about sex before you talk about pornography or sex is just easier to kind of discuss? So parents like tend to start with that. Or to what? me, it's more natural to start with talking about sex because I want them to have a, a positive picture of what healthy sexuality is, you know, like the, the subtitle of our books, you know, 30 days of sex talks, empowering your child with knowledge of sexual intimacy, because we want it to be intimacy mm-hmm. focused, you know, at school, they're going to get STDs, don't get pregnant. They're going to get that kind of basic biology. Yeah, yeah, that right. is to me, like step one of 20 when it comes to sex, I want my kids to have a very positive view of sex and that it's about intimacy, that it's about building a relationship, that there are steps to go before you hit sex, you know, that it's not something that, um, I mean, I would hope you're that I'm, I'm not a believer in hookup sex. So that's a whole nother discussion. If that's, if that's how, as a parent, you want to take it with your kids. To me, it is about building a relationship. And so that's the ideal, but for some parents, that's not where they can start. They've walked in on their kid watching porn. They've looked up a history and they've seen that their kid has been looking at porn for six months or a year. So they might start with a porn talk and that's okay too. You know, like you're going to, you're going to meet your kid where they're at, you know, and just like, we're trying to meet parents where they're at. We have some parents that they've had sexual abuse in their life or they have a, a negative view of sex or they are terrified because of the shame that was taught through to them. So again, that's what's nice about the books is that you're going to look at these and you're going to just look through. They don't have to start at lesson one. They're going to flip through and say, I'm comfortable starting on lesson eight or lesson 12. So I'm going to start there. Or to me, this is the most important. Like in our 12 plus book, we have a a great lesson on consent. And that's a huge topic. And so a lot of parents, I think, feel called and driven to have that conversation, that they want their boys and their girls to understand consent. So they can start there, you know? So that to me is sure, right. is the ideal. Jump right in. Okay, so I wonder then, after doing this and putting these all down and coming up with all the different topics, if there are any of them that really stick out to you as being ones that are maybe neglected or that are like specifically ones that are consistently not not done well by parents or are a little trickier or something? That's a great question. When it comes to, you know, pornography, again, parents want to just say, don't do it, don't look at it. And they just, they, they start, they might just like leave it there. But I am a big believer in helping our kids understand why, you know, when it comes to pornography, there's a reason why it's, you know, considered adult, right? I don't like porn at all. I'm hoping my kids stay away from porn as much as possible. Okay. I know my two older kids, they've seen porn. They see it at lunch. They see it in the classroom. Like they, they've (laughs) seen it, you know, plenty, right? But I kind of try to, again, create, you know, that discussion of we don't want this to be a habit because to me, it's not a great coping mechanism right? This is not how I want my sons or my daughters to view themselves or the opposite sex. And I let them know that to me about pornography is so much about domination and submission, that that is not a healthy relationship. So I let them know that pornography is not a real representation of sex, that the gymnastics that are often performed are not what they're going to have with real sex. That it's like trying to, (laughs) it's trying to do Kung Fu moves in a street fight, right? It's not going to work out for you. Right. And so there's, there's that piece. And then also letting them know that what it does to the teenage brain is very different than what it's going to do to the adult brain, right? Our brains don't finish developing until 22, 23. And like the same way, like a shot of whiskey is going to be very different for a 40 year old than it is for a 12 year old, right? Those developing brains are so susceptible. They are so easily influenced. They're so easily shaped by substances and by behaviors. And again, by the image, right? Think of all the images that impacted us as kids 
cartoons, television, whatever. I, I know all the television shows I watched as a kid, right? They're ingrained in my brains more than the television I've watched in the last five years. As a 41 year old, right? right? They are so, our brains, our brains are so malleable at that time, especially that if they get into that habit that, you know, that porn is, is okay and that it's total, that that's, that those are, we're creating those neural pathways that lead them back to thinking one, that they're going to normalize it, right? That this is okay that, oh yeah, everybody's having group sex and that it's okay to, you know, some of these, you know, deviant things that are portrayed in porn is normal. Yeah, are going right. to be, act, you know, like, oh yeah, that's, that's normal. Like, again, some of the things that like, again, that parents don't know what they don't know when it comes to porn, right? They think they know, but they really don't know. Like to me, it freaks me out when I think about that every future lawyer, doctor, policeman, government representative is growing up watching porn right now, thinking that yeah. it's okay, that you're supposed to find your mom hot. No, <laughs> no boys. <laughs> We're not supposed to find our moms hot, okay? You should not be looking for opportunities to get it on with your stepsister and your stepmother, okay? Like, like being portrayed there, right? Like that's that's not okay. Or like that how, right, right. you know, the mother, like the mother-son genre of porn has just risen in the ranks like crazy in the last couple of years. That was not a thing. Interesting. That was not a thing 10 years ago. There's been disgusting daddy-daughter type themes, for 20 years, more sure. than 20 years, right? Which is still disgusting, right? But now that we're, now we have this other genre coming up here that is like, again, that I have to have that conversation with my kids. It's ridiculous, but that is the world we're in, right? So to me, it's yeah, about yeah. for parents getting brave and talking about things that their parents had never dreamed of talking about, that they have, we need to get comfortable with that. So that is where a lot of parents, are going to be freaked out. But again, I'm not saying start there. You're not going to start with a discussion right there about mother son porn, right? You can start, no, you can start 20 steps back with whatever you're comfortable with, you know, especially with little kids talking with them, perhaps about the safety issues, right? Keeping our body safe. What should we do when we, you know, if there is a predator in the neighborhood or in the family, you know, letting our kids uh, create that safety. And then again, building upon that, talking about the basic mechanics of sex, talking about intimacy, talking about the positive aspects, right? So many parents are afraid to talk about the positive aspects. I'm like, do you really think that because your child knows about orgasms that they're immediately going to go out and try to have sex tomorrow? Probably right. not. But again, we don't want to talk about that. That's an, that's the, that's an awesome part of sex. Why wouldn't we talk about how amazing and awesome sex is? Right. Cause it's like, we don't want to feel like we're promoting it or yeah, it's hard to walk that line yeah. between, um, but again, then that's where you are going to share your own personal values as a parent. You're going to talk about all these amazing things, but then you're going to talk about when the right time is or what that right person yeah, looks yeah. like. Who is that right person for you? You know, how, how will we know it's the right person? Is it by the way they treat us? These are great discussions that are fun to have with your kids about a healthy relationship, about what a healthy relationship looks like. That again, people think of it as just like, oh, I have to talk about penis and vagina. And it's like, no, you get, you're going to get to that. That's just one part of this huge puzzle. You're also going to talk about all the amazing fun parts that lead up to that, you know? And so again, Helping your kids know, well, what, what are the rules and boundaries we're going to create now so that I know I'm having sex at the right time with the right person? Okay, so I think that's kind of the end of our time here. I think we covered a lot of really cool things, really practical stuff that I think is just a lot of fuel for parents because a lot of it just comes down to like, what do I, what do I say? And what are the things that I need to even talk about with regard to this stuff? And, uh, so it's really cool that you've kind of put it all together in this format. And I like the idea of being able to go through this book and check out all the 30 different talks and see which ones you might've kind of already done and see which ones you definitely haven't done and use it yeah. and put together a roadmap for yourself and your teenager. So the question is, how do you get a hold of one of these? They say educate, empower kids on the front. Yeah. So people can buy the books at educateempowerkids.org or they are, they're all available on Amazon as well. We're here with Dina Alexander talking about her books, how to talk to your kids about pornography and 30 days of sex talks. 
and we're not done yet. Here's a look at what's coming up in the second half of the show. I think it's helpful for a parent to construct and think about, well, where did they get their ideas about sex? Right. Oh, like yeah, I right. can, like it was when I started in getting involved in all this that I started thinking about well, where did I come up with my fantasies? Where did I come up with my idea of how quote a man should act and how I as a woman should act during sex? This is an industry more powerful than all of Hollywood, all major league sports combined, and that they have they do they have no care about making you into a better lover. They have no care about um, teaching you about real sex. That it, they just want your money and your attention. One of the big industry websites is called Adult Video News. And mm -hmm. they have trade shows. I mean, this is a very savvy industry. I think sometimes because you look at the, the kitschiness or the campiness of porn and you think, oh, this is just like mom and pop. It's like, no, absolutely it's not. just some dudes doing it. Yeah, the they're, they're just doing something. it. They're, yeah, yeah. they're just doing it. I mean, they have sets that look like that on purpose, right? Yeah, but it's that yeah, it is right. a huge, huge industry that, I mean, I've seen on the adult video news, they have uh, marketing areas and they've changed up their website quite a bit. Like it looks like a, like a nice, neat corporate website. Now it used to, uh, not, it used yeah. to be a little more garish, but I've, as I've recently been on it and they, I've seen the articles themselves for marketers that are telling porn actresses and porn producers go to Snapchat, go to Instagram, because that's where they, and they put it as these are where under 21s are. Now, they're not saying it, but they know that is where our kids are. And they also right. say, I've also seen the articles that says, don't go to Pinterest. Well, who's on Pinterest? It's mommies who yeah, are right. creating parties and recipes, right? And so they know to not spend their time there. Spend your time where the teenagers yeah, are. Yeah, right. Every year, Pornhub releases their stats right, with great right. pride, right? This is how many billions and billions of hours of porn were watched this year. You know, and it was like last year, it was like over, it was something ridiculous, like something like 500 centuries of porn <laughs> had been watched last year. And when I think of that, I just think of what could have been done? Yeah, what could yeah. have been created? What world problems could have been solved with that energy? I know in my local community here, like there is, there is a boy living nearby that has been, has sent his penis, a picture of his penis to on more than one occasion. And it wasn't until I talked to an FBI agent that I know that he framed that in the form that that was predatory. Want to hear the full interview? Sign up for a subscription today. You get unlimited access to all the interviews I've conducted. It's completely affordable and your subscription helps support the work we do here at Talking to Teens. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.